Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We're in the middle of a series on the Gospel in Galatians. Today, Paul's pastoral appeal, not just to early Christians, but to each one of us wanting us to have that living connection with Christ. I'm glad you joined us. It could be a life-changing study for you today. Maybe invite your friends to come over and join you because we've got a message that will bless your life. So welcome to Hope Sabbath School. Welcome to the team. Great series of studies. I need yeah. this yeah. to be reminded not to go back to the elements of this world, but to have faith in Jesus and trust him for that new life that he wants to give to each one of us. And whenever we hear from you, especially when you share with us what God's doing in your life through a study of his word, it's such a blessing. I've got a few emails here I'd like to share, and we'd love to hear from you. You can write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. And we send it out to the entire team because it, it, it really brings encouragement, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. To hear those, those messages. So here's one. I just want to thank, uh, first of all, Adil, thanks for writing from South Sudan. Mm -hmm. And he writes and says, I'm writing to you from Yambio, South Sudan. Though my country is experiencing the ongoing conflict, I still take courage to attend Hope Sabbath School on the internet. Wow. Amen. Yes. We, if we ever needed the Lord before, Yes. We sure do need him now, don't we? Mm -hmm. But actually, we need him all over the planet. Mm -hmm. yes. And today's the day we want to connect with him. He continues, I feel blessed by Hope Sabbath School. I hope we meet together with your team in the mm -hmm. near, near future. But if not here, then in the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 May he continue putting, may you continue putting my country in your prayers so that the people of South Sudan can get access to listen to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. These studies have been a blessing to my life. May God bless your team as you continue to share the word of God with us. Well, Adil, thanks for writing to us from South Sudan. We, many of us have not lived in the kind of hardship that your people are experiencing. We want to be praying for you. God bless you as you not only participate in Hope Sabbath School, but share the word of God with those around you. Bula, where's that from? Bula, Fiji. I told you, you didn't know. Uh, <laughs> Leba, Leba writes from Fiji, and I guess Bula is like, hello there. I thank God for Hope Sabbath School because I'm certain I am blessed just by listening to you all. I not only listen, but I pray to God for strength to live what I learn. Amen. Amen. Is that awesome? Yeah. That's the Spirit of God, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. Spirit of God in us that says, I want you, my daughter and my son, to live what you learn. Your program gives me motivation to follow Jesus. Amen. Please remember my family in your prayers. Thank you and God bless you all. Well, Leba, I don't know whether Leba is a man's name or a lady's name. Maybe I'll get some emails from Fiji saying, you didn't know? <laughs> well, we'd love to hear from you, but we are praying for your whole family. And thanks for being part of Hope Sabbath School. Mm -hmm. Marianne writes from Mississippi mm -hmm. in the United States of America. Anybody from Mississippi here today? No. Well, she writes and says, I listen to you every day of the week and I am learning so much. So Marianne is watching our daily, daily hope, which where you can go every day studying in-depth study of the word of God. She says, I was brought up a Catholic, but I did not learn the Bible, but I'm learning now. Amen. Amen. Is that great? His word is a lamp to our feet Amen. and a light to our path. Thanks for writing to us. Chameda writes from, Eth no, an Ethiopian living in India. He's going to graduate school in India. And uh, Chameda writes and says, I watch Hope Sabbath School every Friday evening by downloading it from the internet. Mm -hmm. I started watch watching Hope Sabbath School one year ago. And when I see you every Friday night, my face becomes bright mm -hmm. and my hope starts to build. Amen. Isn't that awesome? You know, they always tell us, smile, because the love of God is flowing through us yeah. to bless people's lives. Uh, uh, that, that, a bright face and a hope budding, that's encouraging. I am so blessed. God is working his amazing work through you, especially your participation in the study of the Word of God. Amen? Amen? And I'm praying today that God will impress some of you to share your testimony. And by the way, we would love to hear from our viewers too, right? Yes. 
Yeah. You can share your testimony with us. It, it won't come live onto the program. That would be the next step of technology, wouldn't it? But you can write to us at SS Hope at hopetv.org. Share your testimony of how the study of God's Word today, Paul's pastoral appeal, impacts your life. We would love to hear that. But you be praying if God has a testimony for you today. He con uh, Chimeta concludes, God bless you all. And I just want to say God bless you too, Chimeta. From Martinique, one last note. Lilian in Martinique, a French Caribbean island. I listened to Hope Sabbath School. It is for me a way to study the Bible and to learn English. Mm -hmm. I've improved my listening and speaking by watching Hope Sabbath School. The first time I watched it was not evident, but now it's a pleasure to take part with Hope Sabbath School. God bless the whole team. It's my favorite moment to concentrate on my English and listen to all of your accents. <laughs> well, just take a moment and look at the team here today. You know, we represent every nation, kindred, tongue of people. Amen? Amen. Yeah. yeah, because the gospel is going to go how far? Everywhere. To the whole world, including to Martinique, Lillian says. Amen. Yeah. She wants to be a follower of Jesus too. And Martinique uh, is a great place to learn about Jesus. You share, Lillian, what you've learned with those around you. Right now, we're going to sing a song. It's been our theme song for this series. It's a, it's a message I really love. It's straight from the Bible, Galatians 2, 20 and 21. If you've not learned it yet, you can go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess. You can download the sheet music, download the MP3 file, but I think many of you have already learned it. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. It's a beautiful song. Let's sing it together. You know, I'm so thankful for these scripture songs. And, you know, my wife writes them so I can hide God's word in my heart. In fact, she began to write them so our children would memorize scripture mm. and had no idea that it would change thousands of people, tens of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people, because it is the living word of God, isn't it? Amen. It's a promise, isn't it? Yes. Christ living in me, a new life, a new creation, what Paul calls. Mm -hmm. Today... Speaking as a pastor, Paul makes an appeal. And it's not just to those Christians who were in danger of forgetting the gospel that they've been taught. It's an appeal to each one of us. Mm -hmm. Could we pray that God would bless each Hope Sabbath School member around the world? Yes. Speak to each heart today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much that you have sent the prophets the apostles, you've sent messengers down through time to point us to the truth of Scripture. And most clearly, you sent your own Son, Jesus, to save us, to show us the way of righteousness, the way back to you, to tell us the good news 
for this life and for eternity. I pray that as we listen to God's word today, as we listen to the gospel in Galatians, that you would speak a life-changing message to each of our hearts, each of us around the world, and we will praise you forever. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 We're in Galatians chapter 4, verse 12. We sense the urgency as Paul is speaking. And I'm going to ask Simiso if you would begin our study in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 12. Just, just as he's about to, to introduce an important topic, just hear his words as he speaks to us. Galatians 4 verse 12, I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, Brethren, I urge you to become like me, for I became like you. You have not injured me at all. Mm-hmm. Now that word urge, that, I don't know how strong that mm-hmm. feels to you. Does anyone have another translation? Uh, does it just say urge in your Bible, Alyssa? It says plead. I plead. That sounds a little stronger, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, in um, Luke 5, and we won't read it, but it's where the leper comes to Jesus and he throws himself down at the feet of Jesus. And it says he begged him. Mm-hmm. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. That's the same word that Paul is using here. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there's another time when Jesus has just set a man free from a legion of demons. Mm-hmm. And, and it says in Luke chapter 8 that, that the man begged Jesus that he could stay with him. Mm-hmm. Well, I would want to stay with him too, but, 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 but Jamie, like you said in a previous study, Jesus is always there with us, isn't he? Yes. Mm-hmm. In fact, he says, I, I will never leave you mm-hmm. or forsake you. And he told him, remember, to go back to his people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there's that same word. And, and then in Luke 9, where, where a, a man has a son under the influence of a demon, and he came, the disciples tried to cast the demon out. You remember the story? Mm-hmm. They couldn't. And the father comes to, to Jesus and it says he begged him. It's the same word. Mm-hmm. So as, as you think about Galatians 4, where he says, I, I urge you, I plead with you, or I beg you. What, 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 do, you, what do you hear there? Mm-hmm. A sense of desperation. Desperation, possibly, uh, because... If they go back away from Christ, they're going to destruction, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, What else do you hear? We need a video, don't we? (laughs) Because we don't know the intonation. But Tricia Lee? Concern. Concern? Confidence. Yeah, love. Now, you say, well, you can't really hear the love. Mm -hmm. And that's true unless you read the rest of the book, right? Where where he's really, and he's calling them his brothers, right? So he's speaking his family to them. But I think you're right. If we had a video, we'd see that. We might even say, See tears in his eyes. Mm. Yes. I urge you. I plead with you. I, I, I beg you. And, and you've, 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 mm-hmm. you've answered the question partially. Why is he so passionate? Yeah. Because it's a matter of life and death. Mm-hmm. Um, let, let, let me ask you, before we go into the study, have you ever um, had the privilege of leading a person to, to accept Jesus as, as their Savior? How do you feel about that person? I mean, you, you get some kind of connection with them. Brittany, I know that you've been involved. You're in grad school now, but I mean, you've been involved in giving Bible studies. And how, what kind of connection do you have with a person when you you help them to find a life-changing relationship with Jesus? I think of many different people, but I feel like I'm their parent trying to, you know, carry them and make sure that nothing happens to them and making sure they have mentors to keep growing. And um, I often call them on the phone and pray for them, you know, frequently because I don't want anything to happen to them. Mm. I just want them to continue staying with Christ. Can you resonate with that? Yeah. Uh, We certainly would feel that way with a loved one, a friend. Sumiso? For me, the the biggest thing is I feel like uh, I'm inspired more to leave a life that's worthy of that calling because I see them as looking at me as someone who led them to a certain path. Am I leaving according to what I taught? Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting insight because the Apostle Paul will, I'm trying to remember, I've studied the whole book if he's going to do it. I think he will do it even in our study today where he says, follow my example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's a solemn thought. It might even seem a little bit proud, but he's saying, no, you ought to expect that I will live what I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. Right. And that will keep me on my knees, I think, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So there's this, this love, this genuine concern, and maybe a little desperation if, if someone you love is going to go and take a road that leads to destruction. Mm -hmm. Let's continue as he's speaking to them. Um, verses 13 through 18. And Tricia Lee, if you could read that for us. We're still in Galatians 4, 13 to 18. Let's, we've got the, his heart conviction by the word, I beg you, I plead with you. Let's, let's hear what he says. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. You know that because of physical infirmity, I preached the gospel to you at the first. And my trial, which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject. But you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. What then was the blessing you enjoyed? For I bear you witness that if possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. <laughs> have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously court you, but for no good. Yes, they want to exclude you that you may be zealous for them. But it is good to be zealous in a good thing always, and not only when I am present with you. Hmm. So how would you describe his um, relationship with them the first time he met them? Uh, Jason? Very strong. It's almost like they'd be willing to give parts of their body for him. That's yeah. how much they care about him. Mm -hmm. Which we'll come to with, with what kind of physical ailment he was dealing with. Some have thought maybe it was his eyesight. Mm -hmm. Like you'd have plucked out your eyes and given them to me if you could, you know, mm -hmm. cornea transplant or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. um, there was this tight bond. He, he loved them. Mm -hmm. They were his spiritual children. children. You talked about that almost like a parent, Brittany, even though they may have been older than you, right? Some of them, some were younger. But there's this family of God. Amen. And they believed him. It says they received him like an angel of God or even as Christ, which means they believe what he was saying was, and teaching was true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not this uh, detached, come, dump the truth. It's up to you whether you accept it or not. <laughs> right. But I care about you, right? Mm -hmm. It's genuine. Mm -hmm. And what, what does he want to see happen? Verse 19, Stephanie. Romans 4, verse, uh, excuse me, Galatians 4, verse 19. And first read it and then what does that mean? All right, and from the King James Version, my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Anyone else have another translation? My, my New King James is quite similar, Christ formed in you. Jamie, what, what version do you have? The New Living Translation says fully developed in your lives. Christ, so, so they can't be talking about like physically Christ, right? What, what, what does it mean, Christ? Uh, fully developed in your life. Jamie? I think it means that re you reflect the character. In okay, the so it's talk, we're talking about his character, yeah. Yeah. Christ yeah. formed in you. Mm -hmm. um, how, do, how does that happen? Let, let's look at a few Bible verses. Um, it, well, let me preface with a question. Is it automatic just because you say, I, I choose to become a follower of Jesus? No. 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 That his character will be per perfectly reproduced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's take a look at a few verses. Jason, um, could you look in 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 1? I'll be reading from the New King James Version. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. That comes back to Samisa, what you were talking about, the example, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the word there means to mimic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Again, if he just said, imitate me, what, what, how might you react? He's prideful. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. who do you think you are? I have to, like, copy everything you do. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but, but what was the important uh, qualifier there? As I, I am of Christ. Christ. Mm -hmm. So I'm following Christ, and you have a right as someone that I've helped to share. I wonder if that's true even for us on Hope Sabbath School. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, we're sharing the truth about Jesus with the world. Do they have a right to expect us to live Yes. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Is that a little unrealistic? What do you think, Marinella? You know, in my church, um, well, I go to Sabbath school, and um, they have expected a little more of me, so I teach, I teach the Sabbath school oh, class you do? there. <laughs> Is yeah, that because they've seen you on Hope Sabbath yeah, school? Yeah, they've seen and, and I and, and, and I'm growing in Christ when I do it, too, so mm -hmm. I, I, um, I'm 
doing that as also as an example and because the God is is changing my life and I'm growing in Christ. So that's I'm an interesting uh, yeah. thought that Marinella brought up, and that is, I'm the call to be an example mm -hmm. living in Christ for those that we're sharing the gospel with isn't just for them. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, it's for us. Yeah. It's for us, it's for us right? Absolutely, yes. Uh, another verse in Philippians 3 and verse 17. Christ, we're talking about how Christ is formed in us. And, mm -hmm. and Paul said, well, one of the ways is I share Jesus with you. You can look and say, Charity, uh, what does it look like to be a follower of Jesus? And you could say, well, by the grace of God, <laughs> follow my example, right? Mm -hmm. How does it read in Philippians 3 and verse 17? I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. Hmm. There's a, he doesn't say as I follow Christ there, but what, what did he say? What did you hear? Anybody? Follow the pattern of my life. Yes, but there was a little bit more he added, Stephanie. Followers together with me. So both of them, he's following Christ, and he's inviting them to follow Christ along with Yeah, him. I think there's a little more even than that, too, walk. Nicole. He says God will make it clear to you what it is that you should be doing. Yes. Okay. Jason? It says those who those so walk, walk, so there's other people. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry I was taking so long to get there. But he's saying, I'm not the only one. Yeah. Right. I'm not the only one who's an example. That that could get pretty much like a, like a, kind of a, cult following, like right. a, prima donna, you know, superhero. Everybody dress like me and cut your hair like me. You know, that's not healthy, is it? Mm -hmm. right. But he's saying there are other people too. Look around and 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 what? Follow them too. And note them, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Notice and say, you know, that woman of God. Mm -hmm. That that young man. Mm -hmm. they're, they're really allowing Christ to be formed in them. They're, they become an example. Does that make sense? Yeah, Marinelle? it makes me think of my little baby, um, little Abigail. She's only seven months old right now, and um, she's imitating everything that I'm teaching her. Like, as she sees me drink from a cup, now she takes a little cup and she wants to do the same thing. And I'm not the only one that she sees around that's drinking from a cup. So as he's saying, like from birth and from, and from as a child, we're kind of learning and imitating um, from those around us that are our examples. And may they be God-given examples, you know, good witnesses. So the lesson, that's a great illustration, isn't it? A child growing and, and a young Christian growing. The, 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 an important lesson for us would be then, would be be careful. What you do. Uh, th th thank you. That's a colloquial expression, Nicole, right? Yes, uh, American expression, Nicole, uh, says uh, be careful who you hang out with. Mm -hmm. um, be careful who your circle of friends mm -hmm. oh. is. Yeah. Now, we ought to try to build relationships with people who don't know Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But be careful that you don't have so many of them that instead of you influencing them, mm -hmm. they influence you, right? right? So what have we learned so far? Well, Paul says one of the ways Christ is formed in you is you see that, especially in someone who's helped you to find Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and now Paul says, I'm not the only one. Look around and note people, mm -hmm. right, who are living that kind of example. What about 2 Thessalonians chapter 3? Verses, Nicole, do you have verses 7 through 9 of 2 Thessalonians? We're talking here about the process of Christ's, as Jamie said, not Christ's character, right? Mm -hmm. Being reflected in us. Mm -hmm. Again, not to earn his salvation, but because we've, we've been redeemed. We've been adopted into the family of God. Mm -hmm. 2 Thessalonians um, chapter 3, verses 7 through 9 from the New International Version says, for you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. We are not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day, laboring and toiling so that we would not be a burden to any of you. Now, I saw you smile, Stephanie, when, when Nicole was reading that. That sounds intensely practical. Mm -hmm. It's talking about actually, I mean, they were tent makers, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just talking about which day you should go to church. Or, what, what do you learn from that? Well, he wasn't going to be a burden on someone. He made sure that he, a workman, he did what he needed to do in order to support himself. Okay. 
Anybody else? Uh, the practicality of that, Trisha Lee? So it, I think there's a term called self-sustaining ministry, <laughs> and where it is that you are, <laughs> you're laughing, but it's true. It's like you are able to not just show up and then your funds run out and then you can't bless people, but you have funds and means so that you can stay for a longer period of time and be among a society for longer if you need to, mm. to really work with them. And in the process, you're not a burden to them where you become a charity case where it's like, okay, well, who really needs help here? Is is it you or is it us? But I think in that way, it's like it's, it's practical in that, you know, you can be a minister to others, but you can stay even longer if you're able to do that. So how many of you here are paid to be on Hope Sabbath School? <laughs> Raise your hand. No, you're volunteers, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so, so that practical aspect. But I'm, I'm thinking even more than just self-sustaining ministry, and that is people are looking at everything you do. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not just when you pray or if you go to church, they're looking at everything. Is yes. that, is that a bit overwhelming? Uh, yeah. what, it can be. What do you think? Charity? I mean, they're looking at everything. They're looking at, they're looking at how you treat your husband. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right? They're looking at everything. And it can be overwhelming sometimes, but if you are in Christ Jesus, then it's encouraging that my, my life is a witness. Here's a way that I can be an example for him. And it makes me conscious of how I speak to my husband, how I uh, care for others, and the things, my actions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember one time, and I'll come to your point, Harold, someone came to me and said, I believe what you tell me from the Bible about family mm -hmm. Because of the way that you treat your Ooh, own family. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's pretty practical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that, is that theology or is that life? Or is it both? Both. 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 Harold? I just wanted like, to quote uh, 1 John uh, chapter 2 verse, and verse 6 just quickly. Okay, well, give us a chance to find it. Sure. 1 John uh, chapter 2 and verse 6. 1 John 2 verse 6, Apostle John's writing. And uh, let, let's see what it says. Again, yeah. on the theme of, uh, of the example, right? Yes, and this is from the, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Mm -hmm. And it says, He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Mm -hmm. And this ties perfectly with um, Galatians 2.20, our scripture song. Yes. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Mm -hmm. And that means if he lives in me, Throughout my entire day, throughout my entire life, it is Christ was reflected in yes. my job, at the family. So it is, it, it, that's the question. Who lives in me throughout the day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of exciting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. When we're not trying to earn our, our way to heaven and mm -hmm. certainly not to earn God's love. And that, that will take the overwhelmness away, too, because mm -hmm. if you start thinking, oh, no, everybody's looking at me and am I doing everything I'm supposed to do? When Christ lives, like he says, in you and you're looking at Christ, you're going to forget you're not, you know, you don't, you're not thinking about it um, yeah. constantly, and it's not going to be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So I want to give you an opportunity to testify, and this is not to, to kind of uh, bring undue praise to an individual, but, but to just recognize, uh, have you, who have you known on your Christian journey who has really modeled for you Christ being formed in them, or to use your description, Jamie, mm -hmm. that you see the character of Jesus mm -hmm. in them? Mm -hmm. And again, we're not, we're not trying to, uh, what, glorify. flatter people, certainly. We don't want to flatter them or gl glorify them, but to, to honor what God has done in them. Mm -hmm. Someone come to your mind, you say, I, I've seen that. Anybody? Let me give you a, a chance to share. Brittany, let's start with you. I know a big example for me was my grandmother. Um, she passed away, but she, whenever I was staying at her house, I'd come downstairs in the morning, and didn't matter how early I woke up, she was there reading her Bible, mm -hmm. and she was spending time in prayer and, and looking at her Bible, just so many highlights and marks. And, and then not only that, but she was also caring for my grandfather, who was ill at the time, and he had... Um, as he was ill, he kind of had a negative attitude about it. And so she was constantly caring for him, but he wasn't always responding in love. And just to see that what she read in the Word was impacting how she treated that her That sounds husband. pretty practical, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like we were reading with Paul. Uh, Marinella, you, yes. someone came to um, your mind. Yes, my father. Um, I, As a young child, I would also... Um, it didn't matter what time it was, but in the it, throughout the day, I kind of opened the door of his bedroom, and he, I could see him praying in his knees, on his knees, and um, 
through tough situations, he always um, went to the Word of God and he said, you know, never, even through persecutions or anything like that, he, he always uplifted Christ. He was a good example in the home. So his life was just a reflection of the way he lived, and that has helped me also focus on what Christ wants in my life. But his connection with God was very real, and I could see it mm -hmm. in, our, in our home. Now, some people may be watching and saying, yes. I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to them from what we've read so far, from the text we've read, if they could, Derek, I didn't have that. What would you say to them? Uh, look up to Christ. Yeah, yeah look at Christ. Christ. Look to Christ, and what, what have we learned? Well, yes, well, Sumiso? I, I would actually say great, because sometimes you look to people, and then they stumble, and okay. they're like, oh, so, I'll, I'm so disappointed. So they have Christ as they So example. look to Christ. Uh, I think we learned more than that, though. That's yeah. good. Uh, Nicole? Um, I, I was going to say that uh, you would look to those around you that you see reflecting Christ. So you God may provide a spiritual mother, a spiritual father for you, uh, who may be your same age, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to be a person that's older, mm -hmm. but, but, but God could provide. Didn't Paul say, look around and note those? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes? A community in the church, possibly. Community in the church. I hope we have time at the end of our study to come back, but, but if you find someone that is really um, an example for you of Christ formed in them, say thank you to them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. while they're still breathing. Yes. And, 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 and at some point, they may not be with us, but say thank you. And also say, God, could I be that kind of woman mm -hmm. for you, that kind of man for you? Mm -hmm. That um, when people come, we'll go back to our bedroom and maybe shed a tear and say, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. That someone said, I see the character of Jesus in you. Amen. Because we know that's a miracle, right? Exactly. It is a miracle of God. Let's continue our study. Paul not only says, I want you to follow my example, but he says, I became like you. Let's look at that. Uh, Kenneth... Uh, Galatians 4, verse 12, Re read what he says there, and then let's try to figure out what he means by that. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Galatians chapter 4, verse 12. Brethren, I urge you to become like me, for I became like you. You have not injured me at all. What does that mean, do you think? Uh, I understand what he means, become like me, because he's saying, follow my example as I... Follow, follow, follow the example of Christ, and, and, and also don't just follow me, but other people that are walking with Jesus. What, what does it mean I became like you, Trisha Lee? I think part of it was that Paul was and his compatriots were the ones that went to the Gentiles to give them the gospel. And so he had to leave his comfort zone and go into a new cultures and new people and to live among other people. And I, so I think a part of that is him describing that I was willing to live with you and to share with you and to become as you were in your culture to share the gospel with you. Different food? Different food. Different living conditions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and what's his motivation for that? Love. Yeah. Love. His love for them. Jamie? I was just going to summarize that and say he met them where they are. He didn't, you know, expect them to be where he was. He came to them and, you know, he lived as they were like she So if say. you come to Tarsus and make an appointment, mm -hmm. I might talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> if you look like me. Mm. No, it's not that at all. <laughs> Let's look at a verse that reinforces yeah. what you just said, Jamie, in 1 Corinthians 9, verses 19 to 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And Jamie, would you read that? Sure. Verses 19 to 23. Again, it's, it's very practical and it's motivated by love. Mm -hmm. The New Living Translation says, Even though I am a free man with no master... I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who follow the Jewish law, I too lived under that law. Even though I am not subject to the law, I did this so I could bring, Christ those, bring to Christ those who were under the law. When I am with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. When so, I, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, when I am with those who are weak, I share their weaknesses for I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. 
I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. Thank you so much. So in order to, let's be practical now, in order to make that connection, use the expression of meeting people where they are, what, what do I need to, what's necessary in order for me to do that? Jason? You have to somewhat live where they are or go where they are, interact with them in their location. Okay, you and, know where they are. and love them enough to do that. Love them enough to do that. That's the motivation. But mm -hmm. then what, what will that love motivate me to, to do? I mean, I don't know anything about that culture. Do learn. I have to study? Yes. Learn about yeah. I have to learn about yeah. the customs and yes. the culture? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stephanie? Yeah, I was just thinking it, it's going to take us out of our uh, comfort zone mm -hmm. to learn something different. But that's, that's how we grow. Mm -hmm. Has anybody served in another... A uh, country other than Jason, have you been somewhere? Yeah, I was. I was in the country of Honduras, and so being in Honduras, I sort of had to learn Spanish. I had to learn the culture and customs. I had to learn that people did things there a little differently than I did, with time and how people <laughs> related to each other. And so I had to learn how do Hondurans do things because they do things somewhat differently than how I'm used to in the United States. And it was a good experience. It was a challenge, but it was a blessing. And then I became m more uh, comfortable with the people there in Honduras. How long were you there? Seven months. So yeah, so you really had to take some time. Brittany, you've also had an experience? Yes, I was in the Philippines for uh, nine months and up in a mountain village. So I lived in a grass bamboo hut. and Which was not where you were born, right? No, not at all. <laughs> so, you know, learning to relate to the people and use the food that they eat and um, just live how they live. I got lice just like them, you know, oh, everything. Oh. <laughs> um, incarnational ministry, but I, I learned so much from it <laughs> and really got to see how Christ can teach you their life and their culture so that you can bring Christ into a way they can understand. Mm -hmm. You know, that people, some people go, ooh, you know. <laughs> but it has to be the love of Christ in us, yes. doesn't it, that would motivate us. Harold. And the beauty about this is that this is a true reflection of Christ because God did the same thing. He is the, our first model. He came to our location. He yep. came to our location. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he recognized we were wrong, but yet he... Uh, like took this body of sin for our sakes, mm. which is amazing. So Powerful. he actually met our needs as Jamie was talking. He came about. to our zip code, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. that, that's probably not translated in many languages. He came to the place where we <laughs> live, Alyssa. Another thing I'm always amazed in, you don't even have to leave your own hometown to do this, but I, I, I'm amazed by the people who do like the children's ministries or the youth ministries, yes. because they have to take the gospel as they understand it and understand how a child's mind works mm. and make it understand for them and that's a gift of the Holy Spirit as much as anything. So you see a very well-educated person sitting on the floor mm -hmm. yep. telling a story. Yeah. Yep. Not because that's the most comfortable place. Right. Mm. Right? Yeah. Charity? I was a child was a child of missionary parents. So we had the opportunity to live in many different countries and we would always learn about those countries before we moved there. And um, one very of the, in, in a very intentional way. Yes, an intentional yeah. way. And when you greet someone in their language or even learn about their foods and sit down to eat with them, that's sometimes the best witness before you even open your mouth about who Christ is. Mm -hmm. They're willing to know because you took time to learn about who they were mm -hmm. before you even uttered his name. Mm -hmm. So so Paul's overwhelming passion is not just to be culturally sensitive, mm -hmm. it's to communicate the gospel mm -hmm. uh, of a new life in Christ, yeah. but how's he going to do that? He's going to become like them, right? Mm -hmm. He's going to, is, is that not also, like you mentioned, Harold, an incarnational ministry? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's following the example of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Samisa? Yeah, I, I like the way it, the, the, the scripture shared that uh, he did not change in terms of the word, he obeyed God. Mm. But he said there were some laws and traditions. So sometimes we elevate laws and traditions which impact with outreach. Mm. Mm. And many times when you put that barrier down and say, hey, uh, we have this bias or this prejudice based on tradition, but if we put that down to reach out for the gospel. Mm -hmm. So I have, a, I have a, another question for you, and I think it's an important question. I want to intentionally learn about the cultures. I'm going to eat their food. I'm going to live in their bamboo huts or wherever they live, right? It may be an inner city in Manila where I'm living in an environment where I have to be careful walking at night or whatever, wherever it is, right? Mm -hmm. How do I safeguard against that culture 
pulling me away from God and the convictions. And it was, I want to be close to people, mm -hmm. Stephanie, right? <laughs> but, you know, I remember a person said one time, it was a young man said, I want to go and minister to street walkers, you know, prostitutes mm -hmm. on the street. And I thought maybe it would be better if a sister in Israel, mm -hmm. that's an expression for a mature <laughs> Christian woman, mm -hmm. yeah. would do that ministry because that could be problematic yeah. yes. mm -hmm. for a young man, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how do I safeguard? I want to be close to people so that I can understand them. Yeah. Help us with that, Stephanie. So I think of Christ's example. He met with how many people did he mingle with, and they were not clean. And he spent that time with God in the morning and he made that connection throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we need to do is ask the Lord throughout the day, how can I interact in such a way that I'm influencing and not the one being influenced? Mm -hmm. So one important principle, I'm going to come to your point, Kenneth, and, and Charity too. Uh, one important principle, because I think there's a second principle, because I'm not Jesus, but <laughs> one important principle is right. I need to be spending time yes. in communion mm -hmm. with God. Yes. yes. Right? Because yes. mm -hmm. if I'm going to go out there, I'm going to be going into messy situations, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I'm going motivated by love right. to share Christ with them. Yeah. So I need that. What, what else would be helpful? Kenneth? Yeah, because it's God's mission. Mm -hmm. If you seek Him and ask for direction, the Holy Spirit yes. is going to direct you mm -hmm. as to how to go about it. Mm -hmm. Powerful, powerful. So not only am I saying I want to spend time with you, God, yes. but I want to listen to specific mm -hmm. guidelines mm -hmm. that will um, make my ministry to this community or person effective. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Charity? Also based on the witness, you don't have to do it alone. Oh, thank there you. There were disciples. There were others. I was hoping you'd you yes. mention the disciples. How did Jesus send them out? Two, two by two, two. or um, more, but as a, uh, a, at least a couplet and then a group so that they could minister and be effective. Mm -hmm. What's the benefit of having someone with you, Nicole? Is that, that, that you are actually sh an example of not just one, but you're showing as a group who you are. Okay. And also to have encouragement and support because there are times where you'll stumble and you'll need that hand to say, listen, let's get up together and look to Christ and be a unit with Christ. Okay, so the, there's, there's two witnesses to the person you're sharing with, mm -hmm. plus you've got support, Jamie? Yeah. And, you know, that person can be there to help you make the right decision, the godly decision. If so you're when you think about road. doing something dumb? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can have your back. Okay, and they can say, I don't think that's a good yeah. idea, right? Mm -hmm. So there were reasons why Jesus sent them out two by two. Mm -hmm. But I love the idea that Kenneth pointed out that we're asking God because he says, I will teach you and instruct you the way you should go, right? Amen. So we want to get close to people so we can share Jesus with them. When Paul got close to the Galatians, he was facing some challenge. And I want to conclude our study by talking about that because the amazing thing about God is that He can work good even in the midst of bad situations. Amen. Yes. Where we could look in a human perspective and say, this isn't going to work. Yeah. What was the challenge that He faced? Galatians 4, verse 13. Jason. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Galatians chapter 4, verse 13. You know that because of physical infirmity, I preached the gospel to you at the first. Mm -hmm. Do we have any idea? Could this be related to the thorn in the flesh? Mm -hmm. You remember he said, I had a thorn in the flesh? Mm -hmm. uh, that's obviously not talking about a piece of wood stuck in his skin, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Three times he prayed, God, please take this yeah. away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what was the me message given to him? Do you remember? Yeah, Brittany. My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. Yep. All right. And then Paul said, well, then I'll even rejoice in my infirmity yeah. mm -hmm. that the power of Christ may rest on me. Because mm -hmm. when I'm weak, strong. I'm strong if I'm trusting in Jesus, right? So uh, what, what, do you, what was this physical infirmity? Do we know? N not for sure. Any, Jason, are there any clues in the New Testament as to what it might have been? Well, there's at different points, a few verses later, he talks about plucking out the eye and there's hints about that he may have suffered from some problematic eyesight, may not have been able to see as clearly physically. So we know there might be a 
an eyesight problem. Um, and, and by the way, if that's it, because you did mention in verse 15 of that same chapter, you would have plucked out your eyes. Yeah. And isn't there a, one, one of his letters where he says, notice how big my handwriting is. Mm, I, right. I write this with my own hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, does that, do, could that take Paul back mm. huh. to another time in his life, Tricia Lee? Sure. What, yes. what, what time might that remind him of? Before, where he was known as Paul, he was known as Saul, and he was persecuting mm -hmm. the Christians and believers of the way, they called it. And he had a moment of blindness after encountering Christ along the way. But in that moment of blindness, he was dependent on Christ's instructions to him to go here and to go there, and things would happen as he would come to know him. So it could just be also that God was ministering to Paul to continue trusting and being dependent in him as he continued to bless others. Is that, is that a profound thought? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know for sure. We'll ask him when we get there. But, but Jacob, then called Israel, walked with a limp for the rest of his mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. uh, reminding him that God had not abandoned him, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It could be that while the scales fell from his eyes when Ananias prayed for the mm -hmm. now called the Apostle Paul, that there was still some reminder mm -hmm. of that brilliant encounter mm -hmm. with the risen Christ. But the, the key lesson, whether it's eyesight or you say, well, Derek, I don't have that good health. You want me to go live in a bamboo hut? Um, I guess we have to find out what's practical for us. Right. But let's look at some promises that remind us that God can work even when we're weak, right? Yes. Romans 8, verse 28 is a verse some of you may know well, but someone joining us for Hope Sabbath School has never heard it. Yes. So I'm going to ask Charity if you could read it for us and pray the Holy Spirit will touch someone's heart. Amen. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Mm. What doesn't this text say? Everything. All things work together for, or all things are good. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> say, say that one more time. It doesn't tell us that when we're walking with Jesus that... All things are good. All things Everything are good. Is, okay. mm. Is someone a witness out there, right? Yes. Do I have a witness Amen. that not all things are good, <laughs> yes. right? Correct. Yes. You're going to face challenges. Paul was right. shipwrecked, thrown. Right. In fact, we're going to read Me some of the mm -hmm. things that happened to him. Mm -hmm. But what we can claim is all things work God together work for good. Out. That God is going to work good out of, out of, out of, it. Out of, the, out of all things. Yeah. According to his purpose. According to his purpose. Yeah. Let's look in 2 Corinthians 4, verses 7 through 12. <clears throat> Samisa, would you read that for us? 2 Corinthians 4, verses 7 through 12. I'm reading from the New King James Version, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we live, for we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. Man. He's suffering for the cause of Christ. What were some things that happened to him? Anybody? He was shipwrecked. Bitten by a snake. Thrown in prison. Bitten by a snake. Bitten by a viper. Stoned. Beaten. Almost Beaten. to death. Stoned. Beaten. Beaten. Yeah, he went through a lot. I mean, you read the book of Acts, which tells the story of some of yes. the things that he went through, right? Mm -hmm. He suffered extensively, and yet he's saying, even in that, God worked, worked. for good. So I want to give you a chance to testify because this is real life. It's possible that the million plus people watching this program are going, I just wish my life was perfectly mm. smooth and, and trouble free like you Hope Sabbath School team. <laughs> wow. Right? Now, I want to give you an opportunity to testify a trial that you went through where God 
demonstrated to you mm -hmm. that he could work good mm -hmm. even in a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. Not asking everybody, but the Spirit will impress someone. A trial that you went through where God demonstrated to you, just like he did to Paul, that he could work good mm -hmm. even in a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to see if someone will wave at me and, and be willing to share. Mm -hmm. Yes, Nicole. Well, um, I grew up in a Christian home. Um, and as many people do, I drifted away when I went to college. Um, and when I was in medical school, my mom passed away. And um, at the time, I wasn't really in a place where I really needed to be. Um, but at the funeral, um, I think I've shared this before, actually. At the funeral, when I sat and listened to a pastor who had actually baptized me mm. uh, when I was a child, I realized at that point that God had me. Mm -hmm. He really did. Um, mm -hmm. I sat in the, in the church and I looked around and the people that were there had been there all my life. Um, and I realized that I had failed them because they had put so much into me to make me who they thought I should be. Mm -hmm. And I had to realize at that point that God had had me and I had to struggle through to get back to my relationship with him. And it took a lot. But I have to say that people really kind of gathered around me and helped me to see that God has me. He's, he's got me. And I, I, I made my way back. Thank mm -hmm. you. And, and, you know, I just if you heard the chronology there, does Nicole's mother know about that life-changing day? No. 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 She's sleeping until the resurrection, right? Mm -hmm. Will she, how will she be reacting when Jesus comes? Oh, Probably jumping She's going to down. use my favorite Hebrew word. Hallelujah. Maybe, or maybe she had another word, I don't know. <laughs> Glory to God, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. That God, uh, what happened certainly was not good. Mm -hmm. It was a tragedy. Mom died. Mm -hmm. But God says, I'm going to work good here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Yes, Marinella. Um, remembering um, Jacinto. He was a Bible worker that came to um, help my father in one of the churches in Mississippi. And he was young, I think around 30. And on his way to church, he was preparing the sermon. They were involved in an accident, and he was completely decapitated. Mm -hmm. And Jacinto always prayed for his family, that they would come to know Christ, because he was the only one that had accepted Christ and, and was working very diligently to serve others. He had so many Bible study contacts and people he was studying the Bible with, and at his funeral service in, um, in, in Mississippi, this, the, the whole church was packed, and I remember my, my father was the pastor, and he um, made an appeal at the end for people to accept Christ. 35 people mm. came to accept Christ Amen. Mm. Amen. that day, and um, his family also accepted Christ. Mm. All of his family accepted Christ, mm. and I'm looking forward to that day where Jacinto will Amen. see how God answered his prayer even through tragedy. Mm. Mm. Amen. Mm. Yeah. Ultimate price. Wow. And Amen. 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 Yeah. Mm. Just, just like Nicole's mom, mm. he, he didn't get to see the answer to that prayer, mm -hmm. but did God work good through a difficult mm -hmm. situation? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to close in uh, Galatians 4.16. Um, really, it ties in with, um, with people, Nicole, who were willing to speak truth into your life, even at your mom's funeral, the, mm -hmm. the pastor who baptized you, or or uh, this uh, Bible worker, Jacinto, mm -hmm. who was willing to speak truth even to family when they weren't initially receptive. Mm -hmm. uh, let's read verse uh, 16. Um, Stephanie, if you read Galatians 4, 16, we're talking about speaking the truth because we love people, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. And this is in the King James Version. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? So, do you ever feel like withdrawing from telling the truth because you're not sure how people will react? Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. How do I get past that hurdle? Mm -hmm. Prayer. Mm -hmm. Prayer? Yes. What do I always need to remember? Ephesians 4.15, maybe someone could read that. We're talking about speaking the truth to people. Uh, Ephesians 4.15. Brittany, you have that for us? What does that tell us? I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Ephesians 4.15. But speaking the truth in love, 
may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. So let's go back. Is it Jacinto? Jacinto. Um, if he just had a reputation of being a mean, judgmental, critical person, how many people would have showed up at his funeral? Mm. <laughs> oh, some who felt they had to, maybe. Yeah. But because he was speaking the truth in love, what did that do for his hearers? Mm -hmm. Even though he may not have seen the result. What, did, what does it do, Stephanie? We, we ought to speak the truth. We need to make sure we speak it in love. What, what does it do? It would make me feel like that person is sincere. They really want the best for me. And they're going out on the edge to actually even at the expense of possibly me not liking them, but they're willing to do that because they love me. Okay. Anybody else? The risk of speaking the truth in love. Charity? In this story, it moved them to make the decision yeah. to accept Christ. So we have the expression, I know this is not anatomy, but softening of the heart. Mm -hmm. it, it's like um, even when they haven't yet made a decision for truth, the love yeah. is there. Yes. Mm -hmm. They knew that, for example, in this situation, his sin to love them yeah. mm -hmm. and he cared for them. Mm -hmm. yes. And that love is powerful. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you know, I learned a lesson uh, with, with someone in my own family who is not walking with Jesus. And I realized if that person chooses, it's my brother, if that person chooses not to believe in Jesus, not to accept God's grace, God still wants me to love him as much as I can yes. while Amen. he's here, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? Because this is all that there is mm -hmm. if you don't have Jesus and eternal life. Mm -hmm. Could we be the most loving people on earth? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Even to speak the truth in love? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. We've been so blessed today. Mm -hmm. I pray you've been blessed as you've listened. Uh, mm -hmm. The pastoral appeal, he, he's, he's pleading with us. He's begging us to, to let Christ be formed in us, to let the character of Christ be reproduced in us. It starts by knowing about Jesus and accepting who he is for you, Savior, Lord, High Priest, soon coming King, and saying, Christ, live in me. Let my old life die. Let, let your life be reflected in me. And when that happens, as we heard in these powerful testimonies, other lives will be blessed Amen. forever. Yes. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Thank you for speaking a word to us today. It is our prayer that we would accept all that you have done and long to do for us and in us and through us. And yes, that through us, blessings could come to others. Lord, we trust you with our whole lives today. And thank you for your unfailing love in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. What an amazing study. We're continuing the gospel in Galatians. God loves you with an everlasting love. Accept his love. Let his love flow through you to bless the lives of those around you.